The Chicago Cubs are on the air. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to exciting Major League Baseball from beautiful, sunny Wrigley Field in Chicago. Game two of the series between these two great rivals, the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals. And the Cards looking for some revenge. Boy, they are still on a road trip in which they won a couple of games at Los Angeles. And after that, they have dropped eight in a row. The Cubs, with their win yesterday, move back to the 500 mark and find themselves today in the National League East Division, only a game and a half behind the Philadelphia Phillies and a half game behind the second place Montreal Expos. The Cardinals, during the anguish of this losing streak, have dropped into the basement. They are six games off the pace of Philadelphia, and they are two and a half games behind the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are in fifth place. Pete Falcone, a young left-hander, throwing down the right field line of the Cardinal bullpen, going after his first win of the year, and this is only his fourth start. He is 0-1 for the season. They've used him a couple of times in relief. And for the Chicago Cubs, going after win number two, rookie right-hander Dennis Lamp. A lot uh, Cubs won that on the recent road trip in California, getting shut out by San Diego's Randy Jones. The Cubs are loser one to nothing. The Lamp pitched an excellent ball in that one, gave up a homer. That was the only run of the night. And then in his last outing against the Dodgers, he was not involved in the decision out at Los Angeles. I'm Vince Floyd, and along with Rupert Boudreau, we sure welcome you to our broadcast today. I hope we can bring you some excitement. Our broadcast is brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores. It's not just a name. Their way of doing business, true value. The Key Heil and Brewing Company of La Crosse, Wisconsin, makers of old style, the pure brew beer from God's country. Ooh, what a good day to enjoy the old style. McDonald's, that's where you can buy a hot fudge, hot caramel, or strawberry sundae in a special reusable blend. Your Chicagoland Oldsmobile dealer. They find out how the count of men of old can make car buying a pleasure for you. They really can. Oldsmobile. General Finance is 70 Chicago Land offices where you can borrow up to $10,000 by calling friendly Bob Adams at Andover 32020. I'm firing through already around home plate. John McSherry out of work off a few pounds down there today. The big brother calling the balls and strikes is in his formal attire. Yep, he's got the suit coat on. His colleague, Paul Rungi, Bob Engel, and Jerry Dale will be working on the bases are here in the pale blue short sleeve portrait. Sunny day with the temperature here at the ballpark, a very pleasant 74 degrees. Breeze today that is blowing pretty much out towards right field in favor of the left-handed hitters. Starting lineup for St. Louis today. Kenny Boyer making a few changes, but he has Lou Brock leading off in left field with Gary Templeton at shortstop batting second. Keith Hernandez at first base, Hernandez hitting third. Ted Simmons behind the plate at Simmons batting cleanup. And he's starting Dane Org. Started his career with the Philadelphia Phillies at I-O-R-G. Dane Org, he will be in right field. Jerry Morales in center field. Kenny Reese over at third base. Reese is hitting uh, seventh. But Mike Tyson at second base. Tyson hitting eighth. And Pete Falcone, the young southpaw, the starting pitcher. For Herman Frank and the Cubs, some changes today. Bobby Mercer is out of the lineup being given a rest. It is his birthday. Oh, let me tell you. Some of uh, Bobby's fans sent a huge, beautiful birthday cake. Lovely decorations on it. That's down in the clubhouse. And Bobby, not starting this afternoon. He feels okay. And who knows, he may get into the uh, ball game before it's over. But leading off will be Greg Gross, will be in center field. Gene Klein replacing Mercer in right field, and Klein batting second. Bill Buckner with a seven-game hitting streak will be at first base, batting third. Dave Kingman in left field, hitting cleanup. Manny Trio at second base, Trio batting fifth, with Steve Otterberry still battling the throws with Slump over at third base. Otterberry batting in the sixth spot with Yvonne De Jesus today, batting seventh. Got his first home run of the season yesterday. De Jesus batting seventh, and Dave Rader, the catcher, hitting in the eighth spot, and Dennis Lamp, the pitcher. A record of one and four now. Our broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. It is solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publications, rebroadcast, or the use of the descriptions and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club 
is prohibited. If you missed it, out on the West Coast last night, the White Sox duplicated the Cubs afternoon victory. They opened their road trip with a 6-2 win. Same score as the Cubs had here yesterday over the Oakland A's. And Oakland now is just a half game in front of the California Angels in the American League Western Division as California defeated Milwaukee 7-1. to Seattle and Texas split a twilight doubleheader. The Mariners winning the first one 6-5. Texas taking the next half 4-2. Minnesota defeated Kansas City. Cleveland over Baltimore. And Detroit defeated Boston while the Yankees pounded Toronto. Back in the National League, Pittsburgh over Montreal, the Mets over Philadelphia, Cincinnati defeated San Diego, Houston shut out Atlanta, and the Giants defeated the Dodgers 10-7. Now, national anthem is going to be played by three music students from Benton High School in suburban Bensonville. Mike Tomaselli, Russ Backe, and Scott Lapata playing the anthem on their trumpets. They're currently playing together in a group in the Bensonville area. And all three plan to continue their education the music area in college. They played at Wrigley Field for the first time last season with great success. Here they are, from Fenton High in suburban Bensonville, Illinois. Gary Templeton, the shortstop. 
0 for 4 yesterday and a 228 hitter for the season now with seven runs batted in. He doesn't have any homers either. Lance fastball. Big right hander misses low and away ball one. Dave Raider doing the catching. Here's the one. Fastball swung on. He's late. Fouls it way down the left field line and the count goes to one and one. In the on-deck circle, Keith Hernandez, the left-handed hitting first baseman. Wide up the pitch, swung on. Drive to Kingman in left field. Moves back and to his left. Makes the catch, and there are two away. Off the field right. Now. Hernandez yesterday, 0 for 3. He's sporting a 3-10 batting average coming into this action. Had three homers, 21 runs batted in, and that wind, they say, is blowing out at 10 miles per hour. It looks stronger than that at the ballpark. He's going to take the first pitch at the ball. Too low. Beats you pull one or any left-hander or any right-hander. Goes to right field today. They've got a good chance with that wind of getting it out of here. Fast ball is in for a strike. Ball one, strike one on Hernandez. Straight away stand. Good young player. Lamp in the wind-up in the 1-1 delivery. Changes on him, and he misses a little low. Ball two, strike one. Buckner at first base. Manny Trios at second. De Jesus at short. Steve Monteveris at third. Finds in right. There's a swing, and he pulls that inside pitch foul. Out in front of Sonny Roberto, the coach at first base. Jack Crow coaching at third. Crow, of course, is from Chicago, and his folks still live here in the southwest side, not far from Midway Airport. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hernandez swings, hits one past the pitcher, past Trio into center field. First hit of the afternoon, a single right up the middle. That brings up the catcher, Ted Simmons, another switch hitter. He was hitless yesterday in four at bat. Simmons is hitting 311 for the year with four home runs. Ted batted in 19 runs for the year. I know trying to snap an eight-game losing streak. First pick, he swings, bounces it foul over to the Cardinal dugout. Like Mumphrey over there to pick it up. Gross in center field, and he's flanked by Klein in right and Kingman in left field. Bobby Mercer just being given a day off on his 32nd birthday. Stretch the pick. Swung on, bouncing ball to Buckner. He's got to get him easy. Three steps back. That takes care of St. Louis in the top of the first inning. With two out off the bat of Hernandez, who's left stranded in the Cubs. Come to bat against young Pete Falcone. Gross, Clines, and Buster, the first three hitters against him. No score. If you treat your lawn well this spring, it will really grow on you this summer. This spring, feed your lawn Scott's Turf Builder from True Value Hardware Store. It'll provide a balanced, prolonged feeding, gradually releasing the proper nutrients to your lawn to develop sturdy root systems. Your lawn will go thick and green, not just tall. And to help you apply Scott's fertilizer or grass seed, True Value Hardware Stores offer the Scott 21-inch adjustable lawn drop spreader. Features a precision dilematic rate center and easy fingertip control so you spread just the right amount of seed of fertilizer. Its sturdy steel construction will give you years of service, yet it's lightweight for easy spreading. So this spring, apply Scott's Turf Builder with a Scott splitter and watch your lawn grow on you. Get them at participating True Value Hardware Stores. A young uh, against young Falcone. Relieved a couple of times, making his fourth start of the year today. His last complete game, ironically enough, came against the Cubs at the end of May last year. He shut the Cubs out on six hits as the Cardinals freeze to a 14 to nothing victory. His last win, ironically enough, came against the Cubs. That was later in the year, on July the 2nd. When he won a ball game 10 to 3. That's his last victory. July the second a year ago. He had no decision in his last start. That was out of San Francisco when he went seven uh, six and two thirds inning. Gave up seven hits and three runs. Well stepping in against him, had a couple of triples yesterday when he was hitting in the number two spot. Batting 317. Left hander takes and Falcone misses low and outside. Ball one. 
give you the scores. Didn't run down all those standings for you, and we'll do that. Between pitches, here's the windup. Fastball swung on at a high fly down the left field line. Wouldn't they keep it playable? It's being chased by Templeton. Can't quite get to it, and neither can a customer reach out with his cap trying to catch it as it drops just out of his reach over the wall down the left field side. Ball one, strike one. Mentioned the Giants have a two-game lead over Cincy and two and a half over the Dodgers, five and a half over Houston, followed by San Diego and Atlanta. To that American League, Oakland had mentioned a half game over California today. 1-1 one, one pitch. Russ reaches out, slaps a high foul out of play down on the third base side. They beat Kansas City and Texas by three games, and the O's A's are eight and a half in front of Minnesota, nine in front of the White Sox, who could move up. That Western Division. Seattle in last place, 10 games off the pace of Oakland. Detroit in the American League East. Today, a one game lead over Boston, two over the Yankees, six over Cleveland, seven and a half over Milwaukee. Throws the curve and he misses outside. Ball, two strike two. Everybody's slated to play today. The Cubs scheduled to be here again tomorrow afternoon. Did you pitch? Fastball outside off the minute seven. In the coach's box at third base, Joe Amalfitano. And coaching over at first, Cookie Rojas. The playing gross to swing late. They did that yesterday, and they hit a curveball and pulled it for a three-bagger down the right field line. Three-two pitch to Greg. Fastball, swung out of it. Strike three. Good fastball. Gene Klein's the hitter. Didn't get into yesterday's ball game. He's replacing... Bobby Mercer is being rested today. Gene hitting 245 with five runs batted in for the year. Rick Bundy with a pair of three run homers last night. The National League and homers with 11 luck out. Gene almost hit the feet by that fastball. But he can jump real pretty mentally. Please save Kingman and Greg Luzinski of the Phillies by three. Lezinski and his teammates, Mike Schmidt, and all the rest of the gang will be here Tuesday. He's playing through, put in the right field. It's going to be in for a base hit. Coming over to cut it off is St. Orr. And flying. Going away. Looping single to right field. Brings up Bill Buckner before Buck steps in. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cup Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Buck with a seven-game hitting streak, and over that span, he's hit at a 367 flip. Looks at the first pitch. Falcone misses outside. Buck stepping in today, hitting 344. Jeff Burroughs of the Braves, way out in front of him for the National League batting leadership at the stage. Burroughs batting 381. Buck 344. Rick Monday next, 339. Fastball. Look out. Ground ball. Back hit by Kettle. Shortstop goes to second. They get the fourth play. Boy, Lou, that was a dandy, wasn't it? Well, this kid, kid shortstop, not only can move, but he's got a great arm. A very, very strong arm, because he moved behind Reese. And on a left-handed hitter, fired that ball to Tyson, who made a fine pickup on a low throw. But it wasn't even close in second base. Oh. For a moment, it looked like it had gone through. But Templeton, super play on it. And Buckner is on to the fielder's choice still way, and here is Dave Kingman. for a National League Player of the Week today. Beautiful silver set. Six, uh, silver mud. And a lovely bowl with it. Dave yesterday drove it in 21st run of the year. He has eight homers and is batting 245 for the season. Boy, are they deep and around to the left for him. Takes the fastball, it's too high. Brock deep, way over down the line. Morales way, way over into left center field. And Dane Ord, well, he is even beyond the 368-foot mark, which means he's at least 100 feet. At least 100 feet off the right field line. Here's the pitch. Goes after it, fouls it back out of play. Ball two, strike one. Falcone, I mean, down and in with that one. By the way, tomorrow, Greg Gross and Donnie Moore 
are going to be available for you uh, fans to get autographs from. They'll be in the autograph booth tomorrow from noon to 12.30. Greg Rose and Donnie Moore. Stop by and have them sign your uh, scorecards for you and your autograph book. 12 to 12 noon, every Saturday and Sunday when the Cubs are home. Two of the players will be in there. Sign autographs for you. Giant called Simmons had to go out to talk to Falcone. Some of the exuberant Cup fans directing a few boos at the Battery of the Birds. Hernandez holding Buckner out at first base. And a 2 1 pitch coming up to Kingman. Here it is. Throws a curve into the dirt. Hit by Simmons comes to the backstop. Buckner in that second base foot out of play. A very wild pitch. Scoring position now. Down to three and one. Leading the majors, leading the American League in hitting this Saturday. Rod Carew of the Twins batting 394. They beat Kansas City five to three last night. It's a stretch to three one pitch. Takes the low breaking ball. Kingman with the chases. We have runners at first and second. With two gone and Manny Trio, the batter. Drove in a run yesterday, his 14th of the year. Single to bring in Kingman after Dave at Stillman's second. Manny batting 274. No homers yet. Wind blowing towards right field. Officially at 10 miles per hour. Bleachers jammed. Very fine turnout, but not a capacity crowd. Falcone delivers. Pass ball. He takes inside at the belt. Ball one. Jim Rice and Rick Monday are now tied to the Major League home run leadership. Each with 11. To look at second to pitch. Pass ball. He lays off, and it's too high. Ball two. Rice leads the Majors. In runs by it in. Boston Red Sox designated hitter most of the time with 36 runs batted in. Reggie Smith and Rick Mundy of the Dodgers tied in the National League with 30. Two will pitch. Real swing. Makes it into left field. Buckner coming around third. About the battle. What is it? Right. Here is Lou Brock. Throw to the plate. It bounces in. With Buckner on the back. Wall goes over to the wall to the first base side. Runners move up to second and third. It is one to nothing. Tough. Old style, pure brewed in 
God's country. Today is sitting in the 
seventh spot of the batting order is going to be leading off against Falcone. Good just 24 years of age. Born in Brooklyn. The Cardinals got him following the 1975 season. Got him from San Francisco in exchange for the contract to third baseman Kenny Reach. And then, of course, they turned around after that season and they got Reach back. The Aces batting 259. Hooked one into the bleachers in left field yesterday, his first homer of the year. Looks at that one for a ball. It's fastball. Now going misses high, two and all. Yvonne hitting 259. With a solo homer yesterday, and he now has six runs batted in for the season. What was it? Three homers last year, Lou, I think it was. I think that's all he has. It. Yeah. Swing and he's out in front of it. Pulls it foul. Falcone has been behind on several hitters. Now the count goes to two and one on Ivan. In the on deck circle, Dave Raider. Seventy-five of the Giants. Falcone was twelve and eleven. Two one pitch. Fast ball in too close. Ball three strike one. 12 and 16 with St. Louis yet last year, but he had a good earned run average. Simmons going out to talk to him again. DRA last year, even though he had a losing record, was just a shade over three. And he completed nine starts. Got a good arm. And they spent part of last year back in the minors with New Orleans. 3-1 pitch. Misses with a fastball. So Yvonne focuses a walk. this year, one more than Bobby Mercer. Dave Raider stepping in, lefty against lefty. 0 for 3 yesterday, batting against his old teammates, and he looks at a fastball in too close, ball one. Dave batting 221, he had missed 12 games. Starting to be on the plate because of that hip pointer that he suffered. Over at Atlanta, the last Sunday of that road trip. Look at first, he's on a big lead, and he's driven back by Falcone's throw. And a slamp in the on-deck circle. Another throw over there, hoping to get him taking his lead. Falcone originally was drafted was by the Minnesota Twins, but he elected to go on to college in Bayside, New York, at a community college. Comes to the plate, fastball is high, ball two. Putting his act together, this kid's going to be all right. You have to remember, he's only 24. Hair almost black, real dark brown. Here's the pitch. Puts a little extra on the fastball, and he misses outside. Ball three on Dave Raider. Right after he's walked to Jesus. He has consistently been pitching from behind. But he started out all specially. He struck out Greg Gross. That's a rarity. Creel picks, the runner goes. It's ball. That was a ball too high, and it was, so there's no play at second base. Simmons did not hear any call by McSherry for ball four, so he let it fly. Four pitches, he walks Dave, and that means they're going to be actions out of the St. Louis Cardinal bullpen. Steve Switcher going down there to warm up right-hander. Dennis Lamp up there. Let's see if he can sacrifice those runners into scoring position. John Urea out there. Claude Osteen, former. Let's get down. Big John McCary going out to see if he can spot him into a little action. Who would he have done other ball games this afternoon? In the National League, we just have the pitchers. For Pittsburgh, it's Fly Levin, Montreal, Twitchell. San Diego's sending Perry, and Cincinnati has Hume on the mound. Atlanta and Houston will be playing tonight. San Francisco and Los Angeles tonight. In the American League, the Yankees lead Toronto 4-2 to at the end of three. Beatty on the mound for New York against 
Lemanchek for Toronto. And Boston at Detroit is Eckerly against Clayton. Baltimore leads Cleveland 2 0 at the end of one and a half. Palmer against White. White starts at Oakland later on this afternoon. All right. Ready to go. Here's the pitch. Lamp turns around to sacrifice, and he fouls that inside pitch. Back into the seats on the first base side. Strike one count of the pitcher. Joe Malpicato is calling down the line. He wants to talk to him about this. Hell, we've noticed in the last game at San Francisco, every pitch which made the count two and one, that an Alpicato in the plate umpire, and they had the same crew. I believe it was Jerry Dale working the plate then. Got into a bit of a hollering match. Found out afterwards that Joey had asked for the uh, ball to strike down. 0 1 pitch. He bucks one. Marching into sweet. Picks it up. Throws to second base. Relay back to first. And they got themselves a very nifty double play. And Timmy Reese did something highly unusual. The third baseman charging up the line, gloved the ball in front of the pitcher's foul. And he made a perfect play to second base. The relay was in plenty of time. So Dennis not only doesn't sacrifice, but he bumps into a double play. The eighth is on a third, but close the batter. Well, you don't see that one very often, do you, Lou? No, you Man. don't. He made a great play. Gross has struck out his first time at bat. Looks at the first pitch of ball. Takes some of the pressure off of Falcone, I guarantee you. Working from a windup. Pitch to Greg, and he takes the ball, breaking low and away. Ball two. It's a bit highly unusual that Gross would uh, strike out to lead off the ball game. It's only the third time that he has fanned this year in 64 at bat. 2 0 pitch. Takes the fastball for a strike. What do you think the odds are against him striking out again today? Is it the left hander out there or a guy who's ambidextrous? 2 1 delivery to him. Gary Morales way over in the shallow left center field. Fastball swung on. Bouncing ball to Temple from the short stop. He's got it. Straightens up, makes the play. And Kyle Cohen, after walking the first two batters, the inning is off the hook. No run. No hit. One man left on. That's the end of two full innings of play at Wrigley Field. Up still East St. Louis, one to nothing. Sorry you got stuck taking the cut listen for the 6,000 mile check. Oh, no problem. I know how rough service departments can be. Not at our Chicago Land automobile dealer. Who do the scurriest? Those guys were great, but gallant men. Probably just a waiting for hours. I just dropped off the old and went shopping with this man. You never listen to what you're saying. And when I got back from the dress sale, then they pack on extra charges. I thought this was ready to roll. No extra charges. Really? By the way, how do you like my new dress? A hundred dollars marked down from two fifty. New dress? <laughs> Think at the end of two, Vince Floyd and Lou Boudreau here. And Dennis Flapp taking some warm up sauces is now walking over towards the cup dugout. Trainer Tony Garoppolo, Herman Frank, pitching coach Mike Ross to meet him. What do you suppose that kid did, huh, Lou? Hurt his shoulder. On the He's got a sore shoulder. He cannot go on. Do a couple of warm up pitches. Boy. And uh, walk right off the mound. So, he perhaps is in some pain right now. Got to be. He's very, very disgusted looking. Randy left down momentarily, then picked it up. He's carrying it in his right hand, and he's carrying his cup windbreaker in the hand. As he and the cup trainer, Tony Garoppolo, 
drop down the left field line. The door to the Cubs clubhouse, way down near the, where the uh, bleacher wall and the left field box seat wall join. That is a shame. Woody Slime is going to come on to pitch for the Cubs. All right, Lou. Well, Freeman, this is his 10th game. He's on an average of 4.91, and he'll be striving to do a good job to get back into the starting rotation. He was removed from the starting rotation yesterday when Robert came in and went seventh innings to gain the victory. Freeman has worked 43 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed 50 hits, 29 runs. He's walked 32 while striking out 22. So while he's warming up, let's take this time out for this message. You know, there's one guy a ball player a manager really likes to have around. That's the guy who's consistent. He's there every day making the plays and getting the hits. Well, that's the kind of consistency you get with Heilman's old-style beer. You always know you're going to get the same great flavors from bottle to bottle, can to can, case in and case out. The reason? The folks at G. Heilman Brewing Company are consistently fussy about what goes into this great light beer. They select only the choicest hops, the finest grains, and they believe only sparkling beer or Wisconsin spring water is good enough for old style. Water that flows from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. And when it comes to brewing, they still brew old style, the old world way. In fact, old style is one American premium beer that is still fully crazy naturally carbonated in the old world way, which means it's pure brewed, double brewed. Next time, try the beer that tastes great consistently. Try old style, pure brewed in God country. While we have this time, while Woody Fryman is warming up, but he can take as much time as he so desires due to the injury to Dennis Lamp's sore shoulder, We've had some requests as to what I would do with a new baseball club for youngsters that are listening in. And I made this statement that you take your new baseball glove and you get two baseballs, old baseballs, preferably. You put the baseballs in the pocket of the glove and then either tie that glove over those baseballs or get a couple of large rubber bands and put around the glove with those baseballs in the pocket and then you put it in water overnight that is to loosen up the leather now the next morning when you remove those baseballs from the pocket then you get some meat foot oil or any type of oil and rub that glove thoroughly. This will not only soften up the leather, it will keep it softened so you can manipulate the glove in your bare hand very easily, very casually, and you'll have control of that glove when that ball hits a, any particular spot of that glove, you will squeeze that ball into the pocket. Whereas if it remains hard leather, it will tear them off of that leather glove, and of course you will fumble the ball and not have control of it. So that is the secret of softening up a new glove, or one that is very stiff on your hand that you cannot maneuver very quickly, and that you do not have control when that ball either hits in the pocket or hits on the fingertip, or hits on the heel. Simon says he is ready, and he will face Tyson, and then Falcone, who has come up with a new pitch. He has come up with a knuckle curveball this year, and consequently, he's having trouble controlling it. He has walked three men already, and he's very fortunate to be in this ball game, ready to hit next. But only a great play by Reese saved Falcone in the bottom of the second inning. 
when he walked the first two men. He has yet, yet, he has yet to get good control of that knuckle curveball. First pitch by Fryman is outside, ball one, to Tyson. Cubs lead one and nothing, top of the third inning. The pitch is low, ball two. Fryman has walked 32 men to lead the Cubs pitchers in that department. There's one hit deep, and you can kiss it goodbye. It's gone. This game is all tied up one-to-one -one as Tyson hit his third home run of the season. Pitching from behind, ball two, no strike. Climbers came right down the middle, and that is it. Ball left the ballpark, landed on Waveland Avenue. Number five hit off Clyburn. Here's Falcone, a swing and a foul off of the mask of the plate umpire, McSherry. One swing of the bat, we're all tied up, one to one. The pitch, the curveball low outside. One ball, one strike to Falcone. There's a pitch outside at ball two, strike one. Outside for a ball, three and oh, and Paul Russell gets up from the bullpen and starts to work. Here's the three and two pitch by Whitty. Swing a line drive over the head. And the reaching glove of the Aces, a base hit for Falco. Top of the order, Rock is back. Rock, first time at bat, grounded back to Dennis Flint. Dennis Flint had to leave this ball game after pitching two complete innings with a sore shoulder. Swing and a tap to Buckner. He has it. He goes to DeJesus. The fourth foul cone. Go back to Fryman too late. Rock beats the throw, but Falcone is forced at second base. Now, Templeton, switch hitter will be at that, batting right handle. Lou Brock, the speedster, on at first base. Simon Steph. Looks at Brock, he has a good lead. Here's the fifth, inside and low. Ball one. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. So to first, Brock is back safely. Now Simon steps. There goes Brock. Here's the pitch. A swing and a long drive down the right field line. Curving foul. Down into the corner, out of play. Brock with a tremendous lead. Had another stolen base in his hip pocket. But Templeton went after the fastball away from him. Sends a long strike down the line. One out, one to one ball game as Tyson has tied it up with his third home run of the season. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Curve ball, pop foul out of the net. One ball, two strikes. Templeton will be followed by Hernandez. Paul Russell continues to throw in the Cubs bullpen. One ball, two strikes, 
There goes Clark. Here's the pitch fouled out of play. With two strikes on him, Templeton has to protect the plate. Woody Simon with a new baseball rubbing it up. Now gets his sign from later into the stretch. Checks Brock. Here's the pitch. Curveball fouled back to the screen. The count remains one and two. Cubs scored in the first inning. Cardinals have scored in the third. One to one ball game. Brock is on first base. One out. Simon set. There goes Brock. Pitch out. Raiders throw it high. The leap and the tag by the Hastings. And Brock is called out. The throw is high at second base. The Hastings leap for the ball. Came down. Touch Brock. Brock thought that his foot was on the bag as he was touched by the Jesus, and now we have an argument of Brock out there, Boyer is there, so is Cole and Roberto, the two coaches. Brock arguing that he beat the tag as the Jesus had to leap up to catch that throw from Raider. Very close play at second base. But now with two outs, the count goes to two and two on Templeton, and Brock is still arguing at second base. And while this argument is going on, let's bring you up with the score. Philadelphia, New York, that game's just getting underway. Pittsburgh scored three runs in the top of the first inning. They lead Montreal three to nothing at the end of two. It's Fly Levin and Switzerland. In the American League, Baltimore two, Cleveland nothing. At the end of two, Palmer against White. It's the New York Yankees four, Toronto four, with Mayberry just hitting a two-run home run for Toronto. That game at the end of four, Boston has come up with one run in the second inning. It's Boston one, Detroit one, Detroit batting in the second. Now here's the two and two pitch to Templeton. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Striking out for the third out in the inning. But with the home run by Tyson, gives St. Louis one run on two hits, nobody left on base. With the Cubs coming to bat, third inning, Cubs one, St. Louis one. The water pump connected to the engine block, the engine block connected to the car in good mechanical repair can be expensive unless you've got the work. The work is low-cost insurance on the major working parts of your new car, available only at GM dealers. The work covers the expense of unforeseen mechanical repairs on specified parts, including labor. Choose from two plans, three years of 36,000 miles or three years of 50,000 miles. For most cars, the cost is less than $200. The list of parts covered by the work goes on. Look over the cars at your General Motors dealers and ask for all the details at GM dealers who are agents for Motors Insurance Corporation, the insurance people from General Motors. Get the work with Jack Redford's vehicle flaw. Falcone previously was considered a fastball pitcher, but since he's come up with his knuckle curveball, he's been using that more so than any other pitch. Gene Kleins will lead off for the Cubs. He singled in the right field in the first inning. It'll be Kleins, Buckner, and Kingman here in the third inning for the Cubs. One to one ball game.
Klein steps in the batter's box. Reaches our bill today. And we have a very fine crowd, over 20, 25,000 here today. Now we're all set. Here's Falcone's wind up and first pitch. There's the knuckle curve, ball high, ball one. Cardinals play Klein straight away. Ball one hit. That ball and it's swinging a miss. One and one to count. Reach with a sensational play in the second inning. Close out that inning for the Cubs. Let up high and it's two and one. Now the count on Klein. In the second inning, it looks as if the Cubs are going to break this game wide open. When Falcone walks the seventh and eighth man in the inning. Swing and a line drive, base hit to left field. When Falcone has to pitch from behind, as all pitchers do, they're in trouble. That is the third hit for the Cubs. Here's Butler at bat. Fourth finds the second base on a fine play by Templeton at short in the second inning, or in the first inning, I should say. Here's the first hit. Back ball, a swing, a line drive in the right field, falling quickly. Or it comes in and makes the catch. One out. And now Dave Kingman, who walked in the first inning, will bat against Falco. Hernandez, the first baseman, holding the runner Kleins on at first. Now going into the stretch. The bit. Back ball low inside, ball one. One out, third inning. Kingman levels that bat over the plate. Falcone is ready. Check Klein the first. The pitch. Knuckle curveball for a strike. One and one to count on Kingman. With that knuckle curveball, it changes the speed tremendously of that pitch, and it has hitters off stride. One and one pitch. Pass ball low. He tried to get a little extra on that one. Fell off towards the third base foul line as he released that fastball. The count now, two and one. Klein's opened up the inning with a single. Buckner flied out to the right fielder. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Two and two, the count on Dave Kingman. Kingman has raised his batting average up to 245. Eight home runs, 21. RBI. Now the two and two pitch. Fastball is playing a high fly ball deep to left field. Way back. Going, going. Gets it to five. Home run. On the two and two pitch, Kingman sends a high fly ball deep back into left center. And it falls about three or four rows back for Kingman's ninth home run of the season, his 22nd and 23rd RBI, and he gets a standing ovation as he reaches the Cubs dugout. Cubs three, St. Louis one. First pitch the trio, ball outside. That's picking up two quickies with one swing of the bat. The pitch, swing and a miss on a Falcone fastball. Kingman is in his streak, and when he's in his streak, look out. The one and one pitch. Swing and a tap foul. 
Dingman now with 183, I think, career home runs. Going after that 200 mark within the next month, we hope. Trio, one ball, two strikes. The pitch on its way. Curve ball inside and a two and two. This was the count that Falcone had on Kingman when he unloaded. Kingman, that is, unloaded. Swing and a fly ball to right field. The org is there. Under it, backs up a few sides. He has it to us. Now, Ontivera. So went after the first pitch in the first inning and flied out to Morales in center field. Cubs lead three to one. We're in the third inning. On Dave Kingman, ninth home run of the year. First pitch outside of low ball one. It wasn't one of Kingman's tremendous drives. It wasn't so far as height. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Morales is there coming in. He takes the basket catch for the out. In the third inning, two runs, two hits. Nobody left on base. At the end of three innings to play, top three, St. Louis one. Gentle fan, friendly Bob Adams. Pete Scalero here, Bob. Hi, Pete. Bob, how many times did you want half of a ham sandwich but were too busy to fold the ham? Well, Pete, Bob, say hello to the inventor of the lunch and meat folder. You mean a folder that folds the ham in half? Not just ham, corned beef, bologna, pastrami. And... <laughs> Sounds terrific. You know, Bob, the darn thing even works on mayonnaise. It folds mayonnaise. As soon as I work out one wrinkle, it's all set. Great. What's the reason? In the meantime, I've got a lot of personal bills piling up. Well, a consolidation loan can turn those bills into one monthly payment, Pete. Oh, there you go. What's the one wrinkle? And Bob, do you like tomatoes on your sandwich? One of them. Well, that's the wrinkle. Oh, yeah? Mushes them right up. Well, I think people can fold their own tomatoes. You think so? Of course. Oh, thanks, Bob. You can always get a little help from a friend at General Finance. And there are 70 General Finance Chicago area offices. Call General Finance's friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to $10,000. Call and over 3 2020. They also have an office in Naperville. Let me correct myself on Kingman's career. Oh, oh he has 185. Fourth inning. Now, it's up to Fryman to hold these Cardinals in. It'll be Hernandez, Simmons, and Horns. First six outside, ball one. Fryman in relief of Dennis Lamb, who had to leave the game after two complete innings of pitching with a sore shoulder. Swing a line drive. Got a right there line curving. Foul against the wall. Foul ball as it was hit very sharply down that line. Hernandez with a count of one and one on it. Levels the batter with a plate. Here's Fryman, six pitch. Let up. High ball two. Beautiful baseball day today. Yeah, go to Chicago. There's a strike call. A good overhand fastball. Now the count is two and two. Diamond leans in, gets a sign. The windup, the kick, the pitch. Swing and a miss on a close curveball. Hernandez does stop. Run out, here's Simmons, which inning catcher. Rounded to Butler in the first inning when he batted left-handed against Lamb. Now he'll bat right-handed against Fryman. First kick out of play. Fastball for a strike called over the outside corner. One out, nobody on base. 
let up high outside. One and one to come. Simmons, powerful built batter, levels the battle with the plate. He checks the swing on that next pitch. It's a fair ball down the third base line, just over the back. And Honda Barrett makes the throw to Buckner for the out. The pitch was inside as Fryman was trying to drive Simmons away from the plate. He turned on that pitch. The ball hit his bat, went right over third base. And Honda Barrett was there. And Grubbin has fired a bucker for the out. Two out. Now here's Oregon at bat. Left-handed hitter. Grounded to Buckner, who tossed the lamp for the out in the second inning. He swings and misses on the first pitch. Strike one. Two out. Nobody on base. Fourth inning. Cubs lead three to one on Kingman's two-run home run in the third. There's a pitch just missing the outside corner. It's now one and one. A wind up and pitch. Let up. Pop foul out of play. One ball, two strikes now. Now Woody Fryman on the mound, taking his time. Gets his sign from Raider. Now here's the one and two pitch on its way. Swing and a miss on a good hard third ball. In the fourth inning, no runs, no hits. Nobody left on base. Fryman walking off the mound as if he might have hurt his side on that particular pitch, limping as he goes into the dugout. So, with the Cubs coming to bat in the fourth inning, it's Cubs three, St. Louis one. When it comes to mowing your lawn, True Value Hardware Stores can put you in command. They're offering the Jacobson 21-inch self propelled mower with an exclusive pace command for just $199.88. With Pace Command, you can choose separate speeds for cutting and walking to make mowing more comfortable and more efficient. The twist grip handle is another exclusive feature you'll find on the Jacobson 21-inch mower. Keeps the wheels disengaged until you're ready to go. And the Jacobson 21-inch self propel mower from True Value Hardware Stores also comes with handy grass catcher that keeps clippings in their place. Get the Jacobson 21-inch self propel mower with Pace Command twist grip handle grass catcher for just $199.88 participating True Value Hardware Store. Jerry Dale, third place up by now, Aaron Sutton McClay. to Joe and Alpha Tano. Let's to talk to Dale, but I guess everything is all right. As Joe talking to somebody in the dugout, either Herman Frank or Mike Rowe, pitching coach. But we're all set to go. Here's the first pitch by Falcon. Fast ball to the high ball one. Ball one. The team should get a report about Dennis Lamp shoulder is the trainer, Tony Garoppolo, is coming out of the clubhouse. The Hastings swings on the next pitch and hits a high fly ball in the short right. Both Morales and Org at Tyson after it, but the right fielder makes the play. Well, they made it an outfit, I thought you were going to hurt it. Apparently, when he was trying to duck and he fouled one off, that ball came off and hit him on the top of the right shoulder. He got a bruise on it. That was the first announcement uh, made by the clubhouse. Now, here's the radio ball. First pitch by the southpaw. Knuckle, good ball for a strike. One strike on Raiders. Climbing in the on deck circle. The pitch. Swinging a line drive right center. That's it between them. The line got 
Notice we have on a couple of games going on in the National League at the end of two innings of play at Chase Stadium in New York. The Mets are leading Philadelphia 3 to 2. And up at Montreal, it's the Pirates 3, Montreal nothing in the fourth inning. Other action in the National League tonight. Here's the lineup. Morales takes in the first pitch of the strike. Back ball for him. He strikes one. Boston nothing in the second. That team strikes this afternoon. Climbing in the windup. Here it comes. Swung on. Foul. Back out of play. He took a pretty healthy grip at that one. Nothing in two on him. And now the Red Sox has come up with a run in the top of the second inning. Off of Clayton to tie up that ball game. Back ball by Woody, and he backs him away. High and tight as he waits it. Ball one, strike two. Woody's next one. Misses just outside of the knees. Ball two, strike two. Toronto and the New York Yankees are tied four to four. That's at the end of four innings to play. Two two sets on its way to Morales. Jerry six. Low and inside. Nowhere near the strike zone. Back to winner out of Oakland last night, 6-2. They'll be getting underway shortly. Both count on the leadoff man here in the fifth inning for St. Louis. 3-2 pitch goes up for a high fastball. Hits the deep to left field. Fine turns one way. Now the leather. And it is gone. A basket home run for Jerry Morales at a high fastball. And he just kind of left out there. And looks to turn to second. Now cuts way out close to shortstop position to make him the wide turn. Closes the gap a little bit. It is now four to two St. Louis. Or Chicago Cubs, I'm sorry. Four to two Cubs. Very high pitch. He's got that wind helping him when he goes to right field today. He did with that one. Gonna make Gary feel pretty good to hit one against his old teammate. As a swing by reach. Bosses one down to out of air. Straight to get long for the Buckner, and he's got it. So there's one away. Maybe one of those wild afternoons out here. Dennis Lamb worth two innings. When he went out to try to warm up for the third, he had to leave the ball game immediately. And the report was that he had bruised the top of his right shoulder when he was at bat trying to sacrifice. Foul run came back and hit him on the top of that uh, pitching shoulder. And he eventually sacrificed into a double play. Paul uh, Russell now is warming up down the left field line. I see the homers uh, against Simon in the third in there. They run this high. I get a home run for him out on the uh, West Coast. That's a basket that they had. Home run here today is his third this year. Wind up by Woody. Back ball. Missed inside of the belt. Well, I've been struggling a little bit here. Wines it over. He looks at the strike. Last year, Mike had seven homers. They got a tough ball part. St. Louis being home run to him. 3-1 pitch. Back ball, sexy swing, ball goes down to first base line, could be trouble. Trying to pick it up, well, throws, he's got it. That is just inside the line. And Simon, for all his 38 years and pretty good help, came off there in a hurry. Two gone, that'll bring up Tony Scott in City for Big South Cone. He's a quick hitter. One for five is a pinch hitter this year. Is empty. Woody's first pitch. Got batting right handed. Looks at a strike. A good fastball to him. Wind up. It's a little off 11. It's low. Ball one, strike one. Scott is an outfielder. Been in 25 games up to this one today. And he looks at that one high. Ball two, strike one. As a right handed hitter, he's doing all right this year, batting 286. 
Only 158 is a lefty. Two ones in the base. Swung out of it. Good fastball. Good group. Many guys that they have obtained in place recently. Native of Cincinnati, 26 years of age. Left up on that, it's outside. They got in from Montreal in November of 76. Bill Brad, Sam McGee, Daniel Porter's all involved in that one. Three two delivery. He takes strike three to retire the side. And that's one thing the pink hitter doesn't want to do. Go down with a bat on his shoulder, but Tony Scott has done it. Side is retired, the leadoff homer by Jerry Morales. Only hit of the inning, there's nobody left on. Pause a moment for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is the WGN Radio Chicago. Team Klein's to two for two is the leadoff for the Cubs as we go into the bottom of the fifth inning at Wrigley Field to score the Cubs four, St. Louis two. Did you ever see a Sunday smile? No, but I once saw a glass bowl. Oh, <laughs> Field kit is one that uh, we looked at frequently in the West Coast against Kingman. 
Women still facing down there. The plate umpire, John McCurry. The team has stepped out. And Dana Orr's the right fielder. About 100 feet or more off the line in right. He's well over into right center. They have Morales way over into left center field. And Brock guards the line deep and left. And now Simmons is going out to talk to you, Rio. So we have a further delay. And while that's going on, let me remind you that for all of you Cup fans, a 13 and under, you can show whose side you're on by coming out here to Ripley Field on Saturday, June 3rd. That's going to be T-shirt day. And you can get yourself a free Cup T-shirt to wear while you cheer on our Chicago Cup. Remember, you have to be 13 or under. One of the first 15,000 kids at the ballpark that day, and you have to have a fully paid ticket. First pick. Takes it high. Fastball. Bleacher ticket will not be included. T-shirt day, Saturday, June 3rd. And to order tickets in advance, use your master charge. Go Visa card. Give you that credit card ticket line. Number in a moment. The stretch. Right of a second. One away. Swings and misses as he came down and into it. Stretch one. Ball one. Credit card ticket line number is 2487900. That's 2487900. Don't forget now, T shirt day, Saturday, June the 3rd. 1 1 pick. Run out of it. Good pass ball. Kept it down and in on him again. That is a pitch the Kingman has been having the most trouble with. And say, almost got a blind spot there. Sometimes you'll wear contact lenses. One and two count on him. Right enders next pitch. Look out and miss by three. He really went after it. That'll bring up Manny Cleo with Brister still at second and two away. Single, drove in a run in the first inning. Fly out in the third. Three, two for six with two runs batted in. In the series. Big John Urea delivers. Side arm fastball. Swung on a miss. Hmm. He throws like that. He is tough to hit. Six three, well over 200. 23 years of age. Seven and six, the last few of them. Day six swung on at a high pop up, shallow right field, wind carrying it out. Right fielder Orge is there, makes the catch in very shallow right. The leadoff walk to Mercer results in no runs for the Cubs. Bobby left stranded, no hits in the inning. End of five. Beautiful day at the ballpark. We've had some excitement. The Cubs are out in front four to two. <laughs> That a new old you drove up in to leave at the Cutler's Grove. After that miserable winter, it was a pleasure for Harry and me to get out and buy a new car. Car buying a pleasure? We went to see the gallant men of old. You won't believe it, but we actually enjoyed buying the car. They were so warm and friendly. I said to Harry while we were in the showroom, these guys are warm and friendly. I love that blue. They got a terrific screen selection of colors and options. Well, car buying still leaves my husband cold. Time to visit an old showroom. You like the warm atmosphere. Visit your Chicago and Oldsmobile dealer today. Find out how we can make car buying a pleasure for you. <laughs> Paul Russell he is going to be the Cubs' third pitcher today. Fireman working three innings after Dennis Plant left with a bruise in the right shoulder. And third while he was trying to sacrifice his only trip to the plate today. Paul coming off the disabled list on the recent trip to the West Coast had two very fine outings against the Dodgers. Father now, one win, no losses. This is his sixth appearance of the season. Has no save. Wind up in the first pitch. 
Lou Brock leading off, looks at the ball, low and inside. Brock reached in the fielder's choice in the third, tried to steal, it was a pitch out. Back ball, he takes in there. And on the pitch out, Raiders throw was sailing high. De Jesus leaped in the air on the uh, first base side, came down and apparently flicked the shoulder of Brock, sliding in, and they got him. Here's the swing of a high fly ball. Kingman coming on, he's there. Big fellow reaches up, grabs it, flips it to De Jesus. So Brock has skipped off the base. That brings up Templeton, who's 0 for 2 so far today. Most ball clubs, you want to keep those first two guys off the bases, and especially so with the Cardinals. They both are fast. Templeton looks in at the ball, outside. Wind up, 1-0 pitch, fastball away, 2-0. Baltimore leading Cleveland 2-0 at the end of 4. Boston 3, Detroit 1, at the end of 3. Red Sox batting. There's a swing, ground ball foul. Look at this. Toronto just hit the New York Yankees with six runs in the bottom of inning number six. And it is now the Toronto Blue Jays 10, the New York Yankees 4, at the end of six. Pittsburgh, six, Montreal, nothing. That's at the end of four. They beat Montreal last night five to three. Templeton's gone over to get another bat. How about him? Two and one as he approaches the plate. Picture service behind in the next game. It's a swing and a fastball. He gets under it and fouls it back out of play. Two and two. At San Francisco, last Wednesday, ball worked two innings. He had up three hits in a run. San Francisco won that one nine to five. Raper is suffering the loss. Did you pitch? Swung on. Ground ball. Right off of the ball, and it goes skipping out of the grass in center field. Wasn't quite quick enough. Prevents uh, Templeton from breaching. That little speaker is on. And he has to face Keith Hernandez, who has a single, and he has struck out so far today. Singled against Lamp, struck out against Simon. He's got some power. Left-handed hitter. He represents the tying run at the plate. Ball sits to him, a swing and a foul. Out of play over the left side. Willie Hernandez and Donnie Moore throwing in the cup bullpen. Bruce Suter has not seen action since that wild affair at Los Angeles a week ago tomorrow. He did not appear in either game at San Francisco. Stretched by Paul in the pitch. Hernandez takes the fastball at five. One and one. Up starting the action today, a game and a half behind the Philadelphia Phillies and a half game behind Montreal. One out, one one delivery. And then he looks into the strike. Took a little off of that one. Got it in there. One and two. Paul got the victory last Sunday at Los Angeles in that 15 inning season. Donnie Moore throwing in the cup bullpen. Bruce Suter has not seen action since that wild affair at Los Angeles a week ago tomorrow. He did not appear in either game at San Francisco. Stretch by Paul in the pitch. Hernandez takes the fastball at high. One and one. Cup starting the action today a game and a half behind the Philadelphia Phillies and a half game behind Montreal. One out, one one delivery. Hernandez looks into the strike. Took a little off of that one. Got it in there. One and two. Paul got the victory last Sunday at Los Angeles in that 15-inning 10-7 affair. Wheels to throw over to first base. Templeton back safely. He worked three innings, gave up two hits to the Dodgers, struck out one, no run. They did not score against him. Los Angeles did not score against him in two ball games in which he worked six innings. Six out of the end of the stretch. And again, wheels to throw over to first base. Templeton back safely again. He's four and one in stolen bases this year. 
Hernandez goes after the fastball. He fouls it out of play to the left side. It's still one and two on him. St. Louis here again tomorrow. Monday and off day and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at Wrigley Field. The defending champions in the Eastern Division, the Philadelphia Phillies, still the current leaders, will be here. Their first visit to Chicago this year. One, two, pitch. Hernandez checks this outside, a fastball, 2-2. Two, two. Good house. Beautiful day. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung on, bouncing ball, Buckner to his right. He has it, goes to the Aces for the fourth out. And he makes an errant throw. And no business throwing that ball. There was no play at first base, and he kind of lollipopped a side armor way, way off the bag at first, down the line, and goes into the Cardinals' dugout for an error. They have a man in scoring position. No reason in the world for him to make that throw. Buckner had to go far to his right to pick up the ball, and they got the fourth out on Templeton. He went sliding in. The Hastings leap got out of his way, and the runner was already across the bag at first, but he threw the ball. And he threw it way off target, kind of side up it. You know he'd like to have that one back again. Instead of a man at first base, they have a man on at second. Ted Simmons, the batter. Ask him why he did it, couldn't explain. Just tell you, I knew it was wrong, knew the minute I let it go that I shouldn't have. Simmons 0 for 2, batting left-handed. Steps into the curve, and it goes into the dirt, ball one. Normally, Simmons will hit about the same lefty as he does righty. But so far this year, he's a 225 hitter left-handed, 442 right-handed. It's not been a normal start for the veterans. 1-0 pitch. Fastball outside of the knees, 2-0 on him. Four to two, Cubs have the lead. Cardinal batting in the top of the sixth inning with two away. Fernandez on at second. Russell rising, comes to the plate, misses low and away. He didn't really draw a beat on that one at all, and he's trying to be very careful with Simmons. He faces Dane Orge next. A left-handed hitter. Not field deep for Simmons. He's an iron man. Huskily built. 3-0 pitch, he'll pick. Fastball is in there. Moore continuing to toss it down in the bullpen. Hernandez just standing there. He's about ready. Herman Frank, one leg up in the dugout, looking pretty nervous and understandably so. Tying run at the plate. Each team with five hits. Russell now working from behind into the stretch. 3-1 pitch. Fastball swung out. He's Hits the sinker out to Trio at second. It's going to retire the side. A beautiful sinker by Paul. Comes from behind and in the sixth inning. St. Louis has kept off the scoreboard. One hit, one man left up. And an error. Steve Montaveras to lead off for the Cubs when they come to bat in the bottom of inning number six. Still leading St. Louis 4-2. Delicate I'd like to order some sandwiches to pick up. Okay. Two Vienna corned beef sandwiches, one pastrami. Excuse me, is that just plain corned beef on Vienna bread, or is it genuine Vienna brand corned beef on just any kind of bread? Genuine Vienna brand corned beef. Okay, two Vienna corned beef. No bread. No bread? No bread. Just Vienna corned beef, no bread? No bread, just Vienna corned beef. This is a sandwich? It's a barefoot poor boy sandwich with just plenty of that incomparably tender, juicy, flavorful Vienna corned beef. Okay, two Vienna corned beef, one Vienna pastrami sandwich, no bread. What's the name on that? Vienna. Thank you, Mr. Vienna. Next time you want a really delicious corned beef or pastrami sandwich with or without bread, visit your favorite delicatessen or food store displaying the Vienna name.
Johnny Urea completing his warm-up tosses. Oh, that's jumping Corrado. Jumped out and threw 2-0 in the first inning, then was trailing 4-2 against the Yankees. Tied it with a pair in the fourth, and then hit him with six runs in the sixth inning. Billy Martin, I have a hunch, is not very happy right now. Boston 3, Detroit 1, that's at the end of 3. Baltimore 2, Cleveland nothing. And the Orioles are batting over at Cleveland in the sixth inning. The ticker is not reporting anything out of New York after the second inning, in which the Mets were leading Philadelphia 3-2. Ronavera stepped in. Urias first pitch, a little low, ball one. Problem with our communication so far today. Wind up with fastball. Did a good smooth motion and he popped it in for a strike on Steve. Flat out twice to center field, retiring the side in the first and third inning. 1 1 pitch, swung on, got him top of base hit, right past the diving third baseman, Kenny Reed. Boy, he needed that one. He hit some shots particularly against the uh, Dodgers and in the final game against the Giants that were unbelievably hard. But every time, somebody came up with them. Yesterday, he was over for 4, so he has his first hit here in the homestand. He needed it because he was starting the day hitting only 144. De Jesus has walked and fly to right field. Today, Herman has him batting down in the batting order. He goes after the pass ball up high, fouls it out of play for a strike. Casey missed it. Dave Kingman got his ninth home run of the year. Two-run shot in the third inning. Here's a stretch by Urea, the pitch. Casey swing, bouncing ball over the club of the third baseman, going down the left field line. Here comes Adamaris, the third. There goes De Jesus, the second without a play. A double. Got the glove as high as he could and was still out of his reach. Well, but before out of Harris, had a 1 1 delivery, had hit one to reach his left, his shortstop side. He dove for that ball, couldn't get to it. A double for Yvonne. There are runners at second and third for Dave Brader with nobody out. A chance to increase the lead. It's 4 to 2 Cubs. Brader has a walk and a triple. Triple came against the left hander Falco and infield in the first pitch of fastball. Letter high strike call. That's the fifth double this year by De Jesus. Number five. Three in the stretch. Right hander six. Swung up. Pops a high foul out of play. Third base side. Nothing and two in the cup catcher and the former Cardinal. Dave Raider, air flicked with gray. Infield in. They can't afford to concede any more runs or two picks. Fastball in on him and he fouls it out of play. A lot of the fans out here right up to date on what all of the Cubs are doing, statistics, because they are able to buy the stat sheet that comes out every day when the Cubs are at home. Give you all the information, batting and pitching statistics, everything. Standing, go to pitch. Swung on, he hits one down to the first baseman. The runners have to hold. Hernandez getting it just a step away from the bag. Dave Brader turns, a little ejection. He failed to get those men in. Paul Retchell is going back to the dugout, and Larry Fittner is going to pinch hit. As a pinch hitter, Larry, three for ten, with three runs batted in. Looks like Donnie Moore might be the next pitcher for the Cubs. We're in the sixth inning. Ben Floyd here with you at Wrigley Field. Zach Benavich, our producer. Ron Corner, engineer. And Bill Bird kicking in the action today and enjoying most of it, I know, aren't you, Bill? Most of it. Yeah, I am indeed enjoying most of it. I want to. I'm going to enjoy it a lot more if my man Bittner here can line one into right field for two runs. It wouldn't be too bad. Hitting 244 for the year, two 
homers, and I think both of his home runs came here at Wrigley Field. Seven and eight runs. Eleven hits. Bittner for the year. And three of them is a pinch hitter. With three of his eight runs batted in. Coming in this row. Runner still at second and third with one away. Herman trying to get some more runs on the board. He ran into the stretch. Fastball in there for a strike. U-R-R-E-A, John Urea, young, hard-throwing right-hander. Well, it's playing Bittner to swing a little late. Here's the pitch. Fastball away for a strike. Knee high over the outside corner. Perfect placement. Urea out in front of Bittner. Close in the on-deck circle. 0-2 delivery. With a drive in the left center field. Brown goes up into the middle. It goes to the back. Out of there to DeJesus coming to the plate. Bittner cuts through with a two-run double to left center field. And the Cubs have a quick to two lead. And the pinch hitter, four for 11 with five runs batted in. Not too bad. Very, very big hit. Kenny Boyer, the troubled skipper of the St. Louis Cardinals, walking slowly out of the dugout, looking down to the bullpen. And what throws the hitter, he wants to go to his left-hander, Dave Hamilton. The Cubs now with eight hits for the day. Three off of John Urias. Walked that man in the fifth inning, his first inning of work. Got out of it without any trouble. But here, a single by Anavares. A high copper double off the bat of DeJesus. He got Dave Raiders. The runners had to hold, but he could not retire pinch hitter Larry Bittner, so he leaves. We have a delay in the action while Hamilton warms up, and let's take time out for this message. If you treat your lawn well this spring, it will really grow on you this summer. Listen. Dave Hamilton, a pretty well-traveled 30-year-old left-hander, is certainly no stranger to Chicago, but he is to Ridley Field. As he spent the 76-77 campaigns in the south side of the White Sox, part of the 75 campaign, he came over to him from Oakland that year. When he first broke into the majors with the Oakland A's, coming up from Iowa in the 72 campaign, and he was 6-6 six six with Oakland then. The following year, he was a two-town apart of the time, then with the A's again, and he was 6-4, and four, then 7-4. and four. Was 1-2 and two with Oakland before they dealt him to the White Sox, and he wound up 6-5 and five with the Sox. Six and six and last year, four and five. Left-hander delivers, and Gross looks at his fastball, outside ball one. He and uh, Silvio Martinez obtained uh, by the cards from the Sox. 1-0 pitch, one out, foul, back out of play. They were the players that were named later. You know, there are always one or two players named leaders, and later in so many deals. No deals. Contracts of uh, Clay Carroll and Don Kessinger went to the White Sox in August of last year. 30 years old, six footer, about 190. Looks at second, 1 1 pitch. Well, swing, little late on the fastball, fouls it out of play. It's 1 and 2, and let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN, Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is the WGN Radio Chicago. Did get two run double. Lengthen the Cubs lead. Bittner now at second. Here's the pitch. Gross swings and a drive. It'll dropping into left center field. Why the Cardinals have 
lost eight in a row and are now trailing in this baseball game by a score of seven to two. Favor the Cubs. 
jumping up to get. Johnny Moore, now the fourth cup pitcher today. I like him and Frank Stinky. When he both ball rush allowed and sent Bittner into the pinch hitter. On a day like this, in this ballpark, you're never really comfortable with the runs you have and the lead you have until you get that final out and you have more runs than the enemy. Bittner produces with a two-run pinch hit double. Now Downey Moore facing Ted Simmons. Leading off of the Cardinals. Batting left-handed now, and he takes the ball. Then he gets his sign from Raider. Right-hander delivers. Fastball. This is way inside. 2-0. Oh. Morris, 1-2. He has no losses. He has three saves. Bruce Suter has four. Nobody else in the Cup staff has any saves. Johnny Burned with an average pretty high, 4.88. Right ender fires a strike call to pass ball, 2 and 1 now. In the plant, I believe, after working two innings. Bruise on his right shoulder, 2 1 pitch. Pass ball inside, 3 and 1. Ryman worked three innings. Lamp had only given up a hit and no run. I believe because of the injury. Ryman won. Uh, one run. Two runs off Fryman. Both are homers. Leading off inning. There's a swing and a miss. Ball three. Strike two. Freshel in inning. One hit. No runs against him. Now Danny Moore. Fastball swung on. He bounces it down the first base. But Bill Buckner has it. Takes about two steps up the line. And Simmons is out of there. He's grounded out for the third time today. Jerry Morales. Well, how'd you see that one out there? Was that a triple all the way at throat? No, I thought Morales was in front of the ball, took his eye off of it, and went right between his legs. Yeah, we thought it should have been a, a, a single. A still a run batted in and an error, but... Well, well I, I would thought it would be a double as it got past Brock, and then uh, it got past open. Morales. On that ground ball out of air to his left. He's got it. Makes the good play to Troy Hunt. Two way. Well, yeah, you can give him a double, too, I guess. I uh, think hear where he was when the ball, when Morales got to the ball after it got by Brock. But it was kind of sloppy fielding, anyway. I think Dozier was thinking about the two triples yesterday. Yeah, one bit. That's all right. Fortunately, we didn't uh, bring him in. But don't cry about a loaf of bread under each arm. It's 72 cup. There's Kenny Reed. Swinging and missing. Chopping down on a good fastball. What a cut he took. He's 0 for 2 today. More delivery. Breaking ball. A little high and inside. 1-1. One one. I was talking about, you can buy right out here at the ballpark every day where they sell the program. It's 25 cents. 1-1 one, one pitch. He slaps the ground ball. Gets by out of air. Gets by to Hastings. A seeing eye hit for Kenny Reed. Placed it perfectly. It'll also give you the up-to-date schedules, the scores of the games played uh, today and the night before. A cup schedule on it also. The whole thing is 25 cents. They just started that out here this year. Daily statue. Must be furnished by the Chicago Cubs. That is the exact language I gave it to you. It's pretty close to it. Stepping in the batter's box, Frank Tyson. Let off the third inning against Climbing with a homer. Bounced out in the fifth inning. Fastball swung on. He hits it down to Bill Buckner. Unassisted foot out for Bill. And the Cardinals in the seventh inning. No run. One hit. A two-out single. And left out. Time for the seventh inning stretch for the Chicago Cubs. Dave Kingman is slated to lead off. He has a home run today with a man on back in the third. 
and a happy, happy crowd at the beautiful ballpark to score the Chicago Cubs. Seventh, the St. Louis Cardinals, two. Two value hardware stores would like you and your family to make fun of their West Point bicycles. Hi, Pat Summerall to explain. A lot of people ride bicycles as an economical means of transportation or as a great source of exercise. But bicycle riding can be fun, too. And you'll find a wide selection of West Point bikes in styles and sizes to suit every member of the family, from adult 10-speed racers to a convertible model for boys or girls. So see the complete selection of West Point bicycles exclusively at participating True Value hardware stores. Did you ever see a Sunday smile? No, but I once saw a glass bowl. <laughs>
Pittsburgh. Leading six to nothing at Montreal in the seventh. There's a letup swung on, and he bounces it out to the shortstop. Templeton boots it, comes up, and he's up. Throws the first. He is safe. Hernandez coming off the bag as Templeton had trouble. Could have been a routine play. He was lucky that when he flipped the ball out of his hand, he flipped it into his glove. And he took an extra step, had the ball in his hand, almost dropped it. Finally got a grasp on it. Oh, and he threw too late. And he's charged with an error. The second one officially by the Cardinals today. And they're 36th of the year. So De Jesus stepped in, and Hamilton's first pitch to him is a ball too high. Keeps the inning alive. De Jesus has walked, fly to right, and doubles in the sixth inning. Dean Otteberis came in on Bittner's pitch hit double. There's a ball. Ball two, no strike. Philadelphia and the Mets, three to three. That's at the end of six in New York. That's ball a little low, three and oh. Good softball players here, too. Stokers. Just picked up in their annual bullfrog game. Three oh pitch. Yvonne is taking and it's in there. The Cubs with nine hits and leading in the ball game, seven to two, batting in the bottom of the seventh. Three-one pitch. He's playing. It's a high up fly down the right field foul line. Long run, not in time. It drops in there. Gets away from the right fielder, goes down the line, and here's out of there. Coming to the plate to Hastings to third. He is held up as they finally get the ball into the infield. guy in the world. Second baseman Tyson couldn't get out in time. Guy who had the best shot of it their pitcher in the bullpen. It will be ruled a triple just inside the right field foul line. Out near the bullpen. And Orr tried to get it on the first stop and skipped away from him. He had to run a mile down the line to finally retrieve it. So the air blossoms into a run. It's 8-2. to two. And here's Raiders stepping in, following the first pitch for a strike. Here's Yvonne, his seventh run batted in. Oh, one pitch, high with a fastball. It's also De Jesus' second triple of the year. One one delivery. One on. The fans are hoping it up. At the end of seven. 
Chicago Cubs 10, the St. Louis Cardinals 2. Water from God's country. Sparkling, pure spring water. Gottlieb Heilemann spent years looking for water like this. He found it in La Crosse, Wisconsin in 1853. Heilemann still uses this water today to pure brew, double brew a great light beer called Old Style in a traditional old world way called croissoning. Croissoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. But at Old Style, we don't aim to make the most beer, only the best. That's why we use croissoning and sparkling pure Wisconsin spring water. Taste the difference they make. Try Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. G. Harlem and Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Pitcher due to lead off will be looking for a pinch hitter for the Cardinals. Jimmy Dwyer is going to pinch hit, outfielder. So far, he is 0 for 7 as a pinch hitter for the Cards this year. You know, owning Chicago Cup souvenirs, way to show everybody whose side you run. What did you send for the up-to-date list? All the souvenir items are being offered through the mail. Like the Cup's roster book with all the latest info it contains. Also, the full-color picture of this year's ball club, the coaching staff, and the manager, Herman Franks. And this is the best one they've ever had, that team picture. Fire takes the fastball for a strike. Reproduction, the individual uh, hit shots of the guys and their autographs reproduced are really super. You can really enjoy it. That's only the beginning, that, in the roster book. 0-1 pitch swung on, and Dwyer driving one into deep left center field. It is caught on there on the dead run. Brent Gross getting a good jump on it. There's one away. That'll bring up the veteran Lou Brock. Now, to get that uh, souvenir list, send a stamp, stuff addressed envelope with your request to souvenirs. Wrigley Field, Chicago. The zip code here is 60613. It's free for the asking. That's the list of souvenirs they have available. Not the souvenirs themselves. They don't come free. Brock looks at the ball. He's 0 for 3 today. Fastball, it's in there. 1 1. He did reach one time on a fielder's choice out a very close play. They disputed a little bit on a throw that was high from Dave Rayner to Jesus. Leaping board came down and just flicked the shoulder of Brock with a glove apparently just before he got into the bag. Only the second time this year he's been thrown up in nine attempts. That's the ball to him. Two and one. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Goes after one that was tailing away from him and he fouls it back out of play. Pittsburgh defeated Montreal 5-3 last night. Carries a 6-0 lead today in the eighth inning. Fastball swung out, pulls a ground ball. Rio dives. He can't quite get to it. It's in the right field, and Brock is on with a single. One out in the eighth. That's their second hit off Donnie Moore. They have a total of seven hits for the day, including two homers. But the score, the Cubs 10, St. Louis 2. Stapleton wanted to get on with the butt, and he fouls it back out of play. Gary, after lining out and striking out, singled off ball rush over the sixth inning, then was forced at second base. Right-hander gets his side. Donnie kicks, delivers. Templeton swings on a fastball, and he fouls it. Right up out of the net in front of our broadcasting booth, and the uh, count on him is 0-2. That's after taking a 3-0 lead over the Phillies. Now we're tied at three apiece. They're in the seventh inning at New York. 0-2 pitch. 
Looked out, just a fastball in under the little guy's chin. Backed him away, one and two. The Yankees, a loser today to Toronto. One, two delivery coming up. Let's up on it. He's way out in front. Pulls it foul behind the first base coach, Sonny Roberto. Donnie Moore is going to be in that autograph booth here tomorrow from 12 till 12.30. And joining him will be Greg Gross. One-two pitch. Fastball away. Ball two, strike two. An autograph booth. Every Saturday and Sunday, the Cupner Hall will be manned by two of the players. 12 until 12.30. Two-two pitch. Swung out and missed. He got him to chase a fastball hit high. Still gone. Runner still at first base. It's Brock and Keith Hernandez, the left-handed hitting first baseman. One for three today. Singled with two out in the first inning. It's a good chance for you Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow, for example, to come out to the ballpark with your autograph books. There's a swing and a hard one hopper to Manny Trio. He's got it. Well, not one hopper. And then it kind of rolled out to him. And Hernandez is out of there on a routine run. No runs in the eighth. One hit. They leave a man on. The Cardinals really looking dispirited. You can hardly blame them. As the Cubs come to bat at Wrigley Field in the bottom of the eighth inning, it's the Cubs, 10, St. Louis, 2. Did you ever see a Sunday smile? No, but I once saw a glass bowl. <laughs> Official trip to the plate in the sixth, he fouled out. 
takes the fastball outside. To get Vukovic from Toronto, set them Tom Underwood and Victor Cruz. With the ball up too low. Underwood, of course, they had got June 15th from the Phillies for Big Big Fry. Ball outside. To get Vukovic from Toronto, set them Tom Underwood and Victor Cruz. Ball oh, too low. Underwood, of course, they had gotten June 15th from the Phillies for Big Big Pride. What happens if they wind up with Vukovic for McBride? Right hand. Two old pitch. Fastball swung on. He grounds it out to Tyson. Down to one knee to block it. Bobby's out easily. Two go out in the eighth. Base is empty for Buckner. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning and scored on Trio's base hit. Officially, he's all for four today. Did a job advancing a runner into scoring position. In the fifth, tried to do it in the third inning when uh, Klein had reached for the hit. But he was out to the right fielder, and the runner had to hold. Takes the fastball high for ball one. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here at Wrigley Field. In Chicago after the game will have the scoreboard. Her ball swung out of this. Lukovic, one of the best mustaches in the business. They tell me that when Bill North reported to the Dodgers the other night, the first thing they made him do is shave his beard off. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hits into the dirt. Ball two, strike one. And he got into the ball game that night. Couldn't help him last night, though. They lost to the Giants 10 to 7. 2-1 pitch. Well, that pulls the ground ball right side, but Hernandez is there. He's got it. Throws to the pitcher covering in time. And it looks like Buckner's seven-game hitting streak is going to be snapped here today. We go to the ninth inning at Wrigley Field. It's beginning to cloud over just a little bit. Some of the fans think, okay, the Cubs got enough. They'll head for home. The score at the end of eight. Chicago Cubs 10, the St. Louis Cardinals 2. If you're like most people, this is the time of year to think about some serious traveling. And what better way to hit the road than in the smooth riding comfort of a brand new Oldsmobile? Your Chicagoland Oldsmobile dealer is ready for you with a great selection of brand new Oldsmobiles and a wide range of colors and options. Which Oldsmobile is right for you? It's your Chicagoland Oldsmobile dealer's job to help make the perfect match and to do it without pressuring you in any way. Your gallop men of old know the difference between being pushy and being helpful. So if you're getting ready to hit the road, even if it's just back and forth on Lakeshore Drive, visit your Chicagoland Oldsmobile dealer today and find out how they can make car buying a pleasure for you. to lead off. Ninth inning. The Cardinals trailing by eight runs. He swings at a ground ball to DeJesus. Shortstop charges in on the run. He makes the plank in plenty of time. There's one away. And the Cardinals are two outs away from absorbing their ninth consecutive defeat. Jane Ord stepping in. taking advantage of opportunities today. They've left only five men stranded. First pitch of the left-hander is the ball. Or go for three. Four delivers. Fastball swung on. He has a base hit. Single in the center field. Gross coming over. Tries to cut it off. It bounces away from him. And here's Orge going into second unmolested. That'll bring up Jerry Morales. Really gave it a trot around the bases in the fifth inning when he homered into the seat and right. A single for Orge and an error against Gross. Everybody can get to second. That's the Cubs' second error of the ball game. 
First pitch for Adams, a swing and a miss. Jerry, a couple of singles yesterday, so he has three hits here in the series. And his first visit to Rickley Field in the uniform of the Cardinals. Or checks the runner. Down he sticks. Into the dirt. Nicely blocked by Raider. We've not had a further report on Dennis Lamp. The information shortly after he left the ball game. When he went out to warm up after trying to sacrifice about of the second. He could not start the third inning. There's a swing and a high fly ball. Mercer coming in. Bobby calling for it in the run. He's there. Reaches up one handed. Runner holds two gone. They said that he had suffered a bruise on the top of his right shoulder. Hope he doesn't have to miss a turn. Jimmy Reese. Last throw for the birds today. Johnny Moore climbing back up the hill. Dave Kingman is at a two-run homer for the Cubs today. Little triples, doubles, total of 11 hits for the Cubs. There's a swing and a tap foul over the third base side. Bramman worked three innings, gave up the two homers, both coming with the bases empty. All rush of an inning. Now Donnie Moore finishing his third inning of work. And Reach goes after that one. It's a high pop-up. Gross coming in. He's calling for the ball as it flashes down. He's got it. The game is over the cup. Run for him. One man, one turn, one air. And the Cardinals have dropped nine in a row with the cup. Our game over the 500 mark. Today, their 18th of the year against 17 losses. The final, the Cubs 10, St. Louis 2. I need lead free gas. How do I know which one's a good one? I always go with the number one brand. I paid a lot of money for this car. I want a great lead free gasoline for it. I'm a standard dealer. What I tell my customers is that today's new cars run on lead free fuel, but they don't all run the same way on it. So we standard dealers give you a lead free choice. Our lead-free Amico in the blue pump is the Midwest's best-selling lead-free. Ever since the lead-free age began, lead-free Amico has been preferred by new car buyers. And now, there's a second lead-free Amico gasoline. Higher octane Amico premium lead-free in the gold pump. It's designed for cars old and new that need higher octane to run the way they should. You get a choice of standing. I like that Amico in the blue pump. Amico premium's great. See your independent standard dealer near you and get his lead-free choice. You expect more from a leader. Here are the totals now for the Cubs. Ten runs, 11 hits, two errors, and five left. The Cardinals, two runs, eight hits. Also committed two errors. Might have been three, but it's a convenient story. And they left five men on also. Woody Freeman will work three innings in relief, picks up the win. He's now two and four, and beats Falcone, the losing pitcher. It's without a win, and it's his second loss. The forty two hours and fifteen minutes. A good house today, twenty seven thousand three hundred feet. Not bad when you get that kind of hitting, Lou. Huh? Oh, that's great with a little help too from the Cardinals. This is the first Saturday win for yeah. the Cubs in seventy eight. We lost four. Yeah, in a row on Saturday. And Fryman, I think, deserved uh, the victory. He's lost some tough ones as he comes in there, and I think he's, he'll be getting better with better work as far as his control. Home run? Well, Kingman hit one, and Raider getting his first home run of the day. So we put some runs on the board, and it's always very, very nice for that pitching staff. Another day of rest for Suter. Yeah, it'll be a week tomorrow since he last got into a ball game. Boy, is he going to be strong. And we'll have the final game of the series between the Cubs and the Cardinals out here tomorrow afternoon. We'll be right back with a word about that one. Our broadcast today is brought to us by True Value Hardware Stores, and that's not just a name. That's their way of doing business. The G. Heilman Brewing Company of La Crosse, Wisconsin, makers of Old Style, the pure brewed beer from God's country. McDonald's where you can buy a hot fudge, hot caramel, or a strawberry sundae in a special reusable glass. 
Your Chicago Land Oldsmobile dealers find out how the gallant men of Olds can make car buying a pleasure for you. In general, finances, 70 Chicago Land offices can borrow up to $10,000. Call friendly Bob Adams at Andover 32020. Got the scoreboard coming up for you in just a moment. With Bob Forge sidelined with a sore leg, the Cubs are not going to see the no-hitter in this series. But scheduled to work here tomorrow for St. Louis. We've got a right-hander going. And it escapes me at the moment just exactly who it's supposed to be. Oh, well. In any case, Rick Russell is scheduled to go for the Cubs. And he had good success against St. Louis last year. He beat them two out of two, and that's not too bad, is it? The fella needs a victory tomorrow to go with a 500 mark. Rick will go into the ball game with a record of three wins, three losses. If you can't come out and help boost him and the rest of the Cubs home for a sweep over the Cardinals in their first meeting of the season. 10-2 was the final here today. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux, Jack Minovich, our producer, Ron Cohn, our engineer, and our broadcast authorized under rights granted by the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. It's solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is...